or forming and inclination Yates-Sir. And the, the answer or a, an answer or the beginning of an answer is in two grammatical variations on the Shoresh. I'm gonna blow this up a little bit more. So we have Vayitzer, and he formed. And in the first verse, we also have Vayitzer, and he formed. But there's a difference between those two words. Can you notice what the difference is in the spelling of these two words? They, they, they're pronounced the same, but the spelling is different. We have Vayitzer, and Vayitzer, but there's a slight difference in the spelling. Can you note, notice what it is? Hi, Margaret. Welcome. Well, so I, I take it from the silence you're not, you guys aren't noticing that there's an extra yud in the second instance. Did, did you guys both freeze on me? Are you guys both here, Gideon and Joseph? Where's the first yes, yes. instance? Oh, the first instance. The first instance is, is this one that I'm highlighting now. Vayitze. And the, and the second instance, actually maybe if I zoom down a little bit so you can see both of them at the same time. And the second instance is also pronounced Vayitzer, but there's a difference. And the difference is there's an additional Yud in the second version of Vayitzer. Do you see that, guys? Vayitzer. Yes. Yes. The first one has one U. Right. And the second one has two Uds. So the rabbis learn something out from the extra Yud. Is it's a clue that with respect to the animals, God formed from the earth the beasts, there's only one Yud. So we learned from that that an animal only has one inclination, and that's for his survival. He, does, he doesn't have a, a good or a bad. He simply does what he needs to survive. But, but when God created man, he created him with two yuds. He created him with two inclinations. He created us with a good inclination and a, and a bad and, a, and an evil inclination. And that's what distinguishes man from the beasts, is this ability to choose between right and wrong. We don't just function on this survival level, we also function on a moral level where we choose between good and, good and bad. So that's uh, some little bit of uh, lesson on the Shorish for today. Margaret, I'm... I'm glad to have you with us, and I think you're going to get some practice today available to, to uh, do some reciting. It's been a while. How are you doing? How's things in Yahururu? Thank you. Good. Good. So um, I'll ask uh, Gideon and Joseph, you can mute, and we'll, we'll allow Margaret to do some, some drill this morning. Let me um, bring up a good worksheet for us, Margaret. Oh, I think this will be too basic. Let me go a little bit further. Yeah, this will be good. Are you, are you able to see this okay, Margaret? This is a worksheet? Can you see it okay, Margaret, the worksheet? It looks like Margaret, Margaret, did you freeze? Are, are you able to uh, 
see the worksheet. Okay, Margaret. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, let's uh, find some drill for you then. So we have um, a couple of vowels that we're not as familiar with. We have the oo sound, it's called a kubuts. For example, under the ayan, we pronounce it oo. Under the gimo, we pronounce it gu. Lu. Under the lamid, we pronounce lu. Um, the other vowels we're more familiar with and, and don't pose too many problems. But let's take a look at this first line of words starting with the ayin and the kubuts. Can you try and pronounce that, Margaret? So this is the ayin, which is just like the aleph, it's silent. So we just pronounce its vowel. So this first syllable would be u. Mm. Are you are you with? Oh, you're you're muted. Uh, you can unmute Margaret, and I'm going to ask you to. Uh, there you go. Are you Ooh. are you recall? Ooh, it's uh, silent. The I in is silent, so it's just pronounced oo. Okay. You. Okay. Do you recall the name of this this letter, this first letter? It's been a while that we've reviewed these letters. Do you recall the name of this first letter? Mm -hmm. I well done. The ayin is, is similar to the aleph. It's, it's a silent letter. So we, we only worry about the sound of the vowel. Uh, the vowel is u. So ayin plus the kubuts is u. Kindly, u. U. There you go. Then the, then the next letter, D, is uh, familiar to you? Sorry about that. Let's let's try the second syllable. I think you can pronounce that fairly easily. Ga. Well done. Let's put it together now. U ga. U ga. Well done. That's the Hebrew word for cakey. <laughs> cake, cake like a cake. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> so when we want when we want cookies in Hebrew, we ask for ugiot. So if I want if I want Margaret to make me some cookies, I say Margaret, I need some ugiot. Oh God. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Just say we are pronouncing our own things. <laughs> Yes. So, um, so this yeah, is not yeah, the, this, is, own thing. this when, is not the it, this is not the Hebrew word for ugali. When we <laughs> when we add an l, <laughs> it becomes a corn cake. Corn cake. Right. Yes. Right. Right. It becomes maize. It looks like uh, a big lumpy. Yes. Mashed potato. But um. I, I actually started to like Ugali a little bit better on my last trip, just a little bit. Like I, I saw the technique for how to eat the Ugali, like you have to roll it in your thumb and forefinger, then you dip it in your sauce. And so I, I started to grow fond of Ugali just a little bit. Sorry, sorry to digress, Margaret. Let's try the second, the second word now. We're looking at the second the second word now that has the yud and the kubuts under it. Can you pronounce that one? Yura. Yura. 
Right. Just just do the first bit. You the first syllable. Yeah. You lad. You have to pronounce the dalit at the end. You lad. Uh oh, did you freeze again? Margaret oh there you are. Okay. You You lad. Okay, I think I you I'm not sure if you're freezing or just struggling. Right, you lad. Very good. Next. Next word. And what does the uh, you lad mean? <clears throat> he was born. Oh, yeah. Very good, Margaret. Next word. Bush, bush. Very nice. Uh, give me a little busha. 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 I'm asking. Busha. There you go. Busha. Right. Very nice. Busha. That means ashamed. Let's try the next line kindly. It starts with what's called a vocal shva, so the first syllable would be p. Peshu. Nice. Peshu ma. Yeah, that's always a tough one. That's a tet, not a mem. It's a tet. Peshu ta. Peshu ma. It's a it's a tet. It makes the T sound. It's not a mem. It's a tet. Tissue ta. Well done. Well done. The 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 shot of a verse is the obvious interpretation. That's more of like a like a mother tongue word, shot is like the Yiddish, the Jewish mother tongue. But pashut means simple. So pshuta means the simple version of something, the pshuta. Anyway, um, next, next, next word kindly, Margaret. Do you recognize this first letter? Right, right, right. It's the chet. Right. So let's combine the chet with the the vowel next with the cholam, the chet plus the cholam gives us heva. Mm. Yeah, this isn't this isn't pronounced as a vav. It's 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 a full version of the vowel. It's it's the cholam. It's the o. So it's cho. I don't think we reviewed this. I don't think we've reviewed this very much, but um, let me let me show you something that'll clear this up for you, Margaret. I apologize because there are some gaps in your training, and that's really my fault, and I apologize for that. But Look very carefully at our verb, at our vowels. Kindly, look, let's look together at our vowels. We have what's called a cholam. Can you repeat after me? Cholam. Cholam. Margaret, cholam. kindly. Well done. Now what? Now you see that this looks like the letter vav, right? Cholam. Right. This is a cholam. So you see that it. It's formed with the letter Vav and a dot on top. 
but we don't pronounce it as a vowel. We pronounce it as the vowel O. Is, is, that, is that clear? Do you understand what I'm saying? It, it can be confusing because it looks like it's, it's the vav, but, we, but in this case, it's, a, it's pronounced as a vowel, as an O sound. So when you see this, this full form of the O sound next to a, next to a letter, it's, it's a vowel, the O. So what we were looking at over here, we have the chet and then we have that cholam. We don't pronounce this as a vav, we pronounce it as o. So it's, a clo it's an open syllable. Kindly pronounce after me, Margaret, cho. Cho. Chole. Yeah. Chole. And then get the mem at the Chole. end, cholem. 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 Nice. One Chole. more time. Well done. Well done. Let's continue. Tesh, Teshu. Mm hmm. Teshu, Teshuna, Teshuna. Hey. Well done. The only letter I'm not sure of is the first letter. What What is the first letter? Meshuna. No, no, the first letter is the mem. So this is a, this is a confusing letter. It looks in some way similar to the tet. So let, let's take a moment because we have time. Allow me to review that one with you, Margaret, if I may. Um, I'm, show, I'm circling the tet, and now I'm circling the mem. How do we tell the difference between a tet and a mem? Can I help her? Yeah, sure. So first of all, mem has an open, an open gap uh, beneath it. But right. tet, but tet has an open gap on top of it. So I right. think that's the major difference there. Yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's very helpful. Does, does that help at all, Margaret, between mem and tet? So. Are, are you, are you there? Are you able to respond, Margaret? I'm, I'm trying to help you distinguish between a mem and a tet. Yes. Okay. So the, the tet has the opening at the top. So the mem has the opening at the bottom. And it's just a matter of review. And after a while, it becomes second nature. There's no, no need to worry about it. But when we look at the... Um, the word we're trying to pronounce. This third, this third word in the second line is the first letter a mem or a tet. We are not sure. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. So this this third word in the second line is the first letter the mem or the tet. Good. Well done. So given that, I think you'll be able to pronounce this word very well because you had most of it correct. Let's try once more. Very good. Mishuna. That, that means something that's been changed. Mishuna. Hayalda Mishuna. The girl is changed. I don't know how she's changed, but she's changed. It's a feminine form. If it was a if it was Mishuna, Hayeled Mishuna, the boy is changed. Hayalda, the girl Mishuna. 
Let's try the third line, Margaret. Let's keep on going since we have some time. Well done. Keep, let's keep working. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so the I-N is yeah. silent, so we just pronounce the vowel. Yeah, ah. Yeah, ah. Nice. Right. Yeah, Is it a shin or a sin? Yeah, asi. Shin. No, it's a sin. Sin. A sin. It is the shin, not the sin. Yeah, it, it's the. It's the sin, not the shin. Yeah, asa. It's a sin. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you want to try? There you go. Well done. Ya asa. That means he will do or he will make. Who ya asa ugali hayom? He will make ugali today. <laughs> next, next word kindly. Sidaret. C. Good. C. Next syllable. Sidaret. C. Good. C. De. Next syllable. Sid. Sid. Are you having trouble with this letter, remembering this letter? This no. is your rage. Oh, okay. Okay. I got to remember the letter. It's reish. It's the R sound, the reish. So you have the dalit with the little ledge on the right, and then the reish is a curve, and it's smooth. So C de ret. Ret. C de ret. She de ret. I understand that the, the Raish and the Lamed are, are challenging. Um, so that's no, no worries there. Sideret. Um, sideret. Like Seder is order. Sideret would be a, a, feminine, a feminine form of Seder. Actually, there's a word, the Passover Seder. I don't know if you ever came across that term. The Passover Seder is, is, is what Christians understand as the Last Supper, was a Passover celebration. It's, it's a ritual meal called a Seder. And the word Seder means order, um, because that, that particular meal that we celebrate at Passover has a particular order and all sorts of special rituals that go on during the meal. But Sederet is a feminine form of Seder. Anyway, nice, nice work, nice work. I'm really, I'm really glad that we, we could, we could do some extra work together, Margaret. And um, I think it makes a big difference uh, to have an opportunity to sort of identify, you know, some of the gaps. And this was a great, a great chance today to do that. And uh, um, I, I think again, just reviewing for a few minutes each day, the names of the letters and the pronunciations of the letters will take you very far. Um, I know we're busy and it's not always easy to do that, but anyway, good work all. So I think uh, that's the lesson for today, guys. 
Um, we're back to our back to our roots of our loyal followers, and uh, hopefully the 9 p.m. will have some new faces. But um, it was great to work in in a little bit more detail with you, Gideon and, and Joseph as well. So thank you very much. Yeah, but I have a suggestion here. Yeah. yeah. I I think uh, if it it if it if it uh, it can be possible.